Yogi Clan, welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service. I am here today with Chuck, Lou, and the Unicorn. So we are going to attempt today to get the Unicorn running just so everybody can get up to speed, including Chuck. Let's go over. So next step is dropping the battery into the box. We are to that point. We have hooked back up all the electrics. So we'll start the one variable we have is this is like a bus bar right here where this hot this hot comes into this bus bar. We need to find a place. There's a screw hole right here, but I don't know where it screws into. I hadn't found that yet. So uh, since that's laying on the shaft of the transmission, I believe, we probably should get that secure because that's live power. Yeah. All right. So that needs to be fixed. Then we can put the battery in. I have the four spark, the three spark plugs pulled on this side. We have pulled out the starter here, verified that the teeth in there were good. The starter's back in. And you can see the three plugs are right there. Same for the other side. We're gonna crank it without the plugs just to make sure it turns over, but I really do need, we can put these old plugs in, but we need new plugs. Basically, he had pulled this engine out, fixed that, and put it back in. Hasn't connected anything. Uh, up under here, right there is his, right there is his pet cock. That's not attached. There's no gas line on it. And when, like I said before, when it was delivered, it was not attached. Uh, his cooling system is pretty much completely empty. His radiator is hanging. Today, I'd like to make sure this engine turns over. I do have oil and a filter to put oil and a filter in it. I have Marvel mystery oil. We can put the battery in. We can get the bus bar attached, start putting some things back together, but I want to make sure it cranks and fires. Right. And I'll find the other three plugs and we'll get it to fire. So that's kind of the goal is I, I, the first thing we need to do is get that bar situated, get the battery in, and then we can probably do a test crank. Yep. And then after the test crank, we can then rehook all the, his electrical little doodads that he has going on. Cause I mean, there's a ton of them. If you go to this side, his horn is just hanging here and need to attach that. He has this, I don't know what this I think is like a cigarette lighter, like powerpoint USB. yeah powerpoint i don't even think it's just usb it's just oh, a cigarette, cigarette lighter. lighter so i don't know where that was mounted that needs to be redone but look oh, that's a communication that's a headset it looks like on the from this from exclusive, that right and then his calipers are frozen but i can do the calipers another day today mm -hmm. i just want to get i just want to get this bike to fire again it's a few that's a giant fuse that's a, yeah, that's what that is. It's a 55 amp fuse. Huh. Here is our miscellaneous box of parts and screws. Three builders later. Yep. So that, that's our parts box. Well, it looks and like there's two screws that hold this into the fender. Yes. Okay, I think I found the two that help hold the box. Okay. That looks like... That probably it. Yep. There we go. That's library a, that's an official shop school because it's got to be down low right because the 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 positives on this side of the, the box so and i don't want to leave it just hanging no i was just looking to see maybe if there was a spot on the back of the starter that it but no yeah because everything else seems like it's got a home every time i turn around i find something new with this bike yeah so my thought is Let's get the battery in, mount the battery. Maybe that will give us an idea of where it, it will end up. In That's, fall. yeah, I'm not against that. All right, we have something is on. Key is off. We got something pulling amperage. That fuse? It's not touching anything. I mean, it's just in the air right Watch now. Watch where we're now. Every time I touch this bike, I learn something new. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, with that bit of news, you, would you like a cup of coffee? Sure. I take it that the battery wasn't in it when you... No, it was not in it. Okay. Nor was the uh, water pump that's sitting right next to your left knee. Yeah. The battery was in the box, but nothing was connected for transportation purposes. And the red was hanging out there and the black was, that black was pulled up into that hole. So that's why I naturally thought, okay, well, there's yeah, the brown. No, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. But I remember looking at it going, 
Dude, isn't that attached? Because I thought it was like some kind of bus bar type. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's... it's and uh, and I thought, wait a second, that ground looks like it is attached to the bus bar. And I looked again, but no, it can't be. It's got to be going over to the starter, and I'm just not seeing it. The saga of the unicorn continues. Yeah. And really, until we figure that out, we can't even try to crank it over. No. So we're kind of dead in the water again. Until we figure that piece out. That's why it's important to have a service manual. Although this one is pretty darn rudimentary. It's more like a kid's cartoon sketch <laughs> that's really poorly labeled. Maybe because it's written right to left. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm thinking that the ground would just be a cable directly to the motor. And uh, on a Harley, it goes to the frame right in front of your seat, right by your, yeah. your junk. <laughs> yeah, right by your package. Good. All right, here's the battery. That's negative. That's yeah, the fuse here. Right. But look, that goes off of there and through something That's first. That's solenoid. And then this goes to alternator. You see that? Right. Oh. Okay. That's what the other side goes to. And this 55 amp goes, I think the main part of it goes to the alternator because I don't think that, that white. Alternator. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, the negative just goes to a ground, so we're missing the ground strap. That's why we can't find the yogurt. The water pump is, is on there. Oh, it's not on there. Right. So that's where that one goes. Alternator. Gotcha. So... Ta-da! We found it! This goes on the other side. That's where that bolts to. To power that. To Right. So this gets power from that. The split off. All right. That all makes sense. We're missing the ground cable. We're missing the ground strap. We're missing the ground Which cable. we can get from any auto parts store. Right. If we can figure out where that's got to... Mount. Then we know the length. Then we right. can buy a ground strap of that length. Right. All right. Back on track. <laughs> all right. See, the service manual came in handy. So if we can figure out where it connects, zero us in on potentially where this... Right. Mounts, right? I just saw something else. I don't know if you saw broken bolt here where the alternator bolts on. Oh gosh. That's because it was in there completely whoppy. Whoppy? Wonky? Spell? Oh, wonky. Wonky. Okay. I was like, whoppy. I'm like, Whoa. can you spell that word, Chuck? Well, whoppy, <laughs> wonky. Jo whoppy jawed, wonky, <laughs> funky, incorrect. And Flat some profanity. Out <laughs> Flat out wrong. And some profanity that begins with F. Broken bolt right there, huh? Yep. Yeah, because you got that as a, like a seating, right. seating pins. Yep. There we go. Found out more stuff about this bike. It just never keeps giving. But do you see what I'm saying when I say that it looks like the last shot pulled the engine out, fixed their problem, put it back in, and have done nothing. Right. That they stopped there. Yeah. So once we get the ground strap, we can then put attempt the, to put it back together, fire it up. Crank it over, see what it does, and go from there. Back with the unicorn. I don't think I told you this story. Why exactly do I call this bike the unicorn? Well, this bike belongs to a good friend of ours who is trying to work his way up in the motorcycle club. And, he, and I've seen him ride this a few times, but this bike's been down for quite some time. So the last time I saw him ride, it was a long time ago. Long enough that many of us don't even remember this bike until it showed up in my house. So we joke with him like, yeah, sure, right, you have a bike. It must be a unicorn. Here it is, the unicorn. So I went and got some Marvel mystery oil so we can put it in some of these plug holes before we fire it up we got four bottles of oil and a filter so we can replace that oddly enough from what I've researched the thing takes 3.9 quarts for such a big bike that's not a lot of oil we also got a cable for the battery because it doesn't have a ground strap now I realize this one's red I got some heat shrink tape I'm gonna put some black heat shrink tape over this and heat shrink it that way now hey we got a black cable and it looks better than wrapping it with electrical tape right Hopefully tonight I'm gonna eat some dinner first, but when Chuck gets here, hopefully we can get this thing to fire tonight because this video won't be over until this bike fires. Let's hope that's tonight. In talking with him, this cable here goes to his USB. So we're keeping this cable here. This thing up here, I believe 
that has these three little black wires on it. If I'm not mistaken, in here there's like a cigarette lighter, and then there is a old school plug, plug that plugs in the cigarette lighter, which plugs into that thing up there. That says XM on it. Serious radio? Yeah. That's what that is, because there's probably some kind of thing that you put yep. in that dock. Yep. All right, well, that's going to go. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't use it, so All right. we can eliminate that wire. That dock thing right there. All right. You can see the XM radio, but you can see those three little wires, which comes down to this plug-in thing, which has all this zip-tied up wire, and also somewhere in here is like a cigarette a cigarette plug gotta go and anything that's really non-essential we're gonna remove so this will go from the negative side of the battery to the engine block that u-shaped bracket that that uh goes around fuse, the box right right which is what that fuse bolts to right see how that's got the like ears on it yeah that's what that metal thing goes down through that holds this whole battery box up so it's not just on the plastic but I was looking at pictures to kind of get an idea of where everything went because I didn't see it together previously and I'm like oh that's where that goes and you're securing it to that free stud that we found down there yeah that's where that that picture I sent you yeah uh, circled that's where the it looked like it needed to go so so this cable I got was 18 inches. You got enough? Yeah. So yeah. in theory, if we reconnect this uh, positive terminal, we <laughs> should potentially be okay, right? Right. In theory. In theory. Uh, we do need to put oil in it. Probably what I would probably recommend is pulling the plug just sure. to make sure that we're fully drained, replace the filter, and then put uh, fresh oil in. So while we're getting right this ready to fire, while Chuck is working on that, we don't know how much oil is in this, if any. I'm thinking there's nothing, but I don't want to place all our marbles in that. So we're going to go ahead and just drain everything. To just pull the plug make sure there's nothing in there. I would hate to add add four quarts of oil and rise. I already had two still in it. Somebody put that in tight. Oh, oil coming out. I guess it's safe. It's 3.9. I guess it's safe to just dump four. I, I would because if he had it apart, things are dry. I'm going to do a full T-clock on it after we can get it to reliably start and stay running. The T-clock is when I can fix the brakes, when I can tweak this and tweak that and get it where, where it needs to be. He said that the carbs were already addressed. I don't know if I firmly believe that. And then we still have to reconnect the gas tank and the pet cock. So, I mean, there's still a good bit of work to do before I get to the T-clock. Yeah. Just get over this hump here. Then I think in the, the next couple nights or over the weekend, I can, I can knock the rest out. Because the rest is pretty simple stuff. We got one Canon filter. Oh my gosh. That's the same guy who put the bolt back in also put the filter on. <laughs> So anyway, looking at that last picture I sent you with the battery cover, this thing obviously mounts on top of the battery cover. Gotcha. Which we don't have. Which we don't have. Seriously, bro. I had to like mangle that thing to get it going. Oil change complete. Are we ready? All right. Yeah, I believe so. Ah, uh, marble mystery oil in the cylinders. Yeah, we wanted to. What do you think about that? You got a funnel we could drip a little bit down in there and we'll lay a rag over the top half a teaspoon yeah just a little bit in there to get some oil down in there we know that at least one of these had fuel in it because we have a rusted spark plug and the reason for this is because we know that it's been dry and mr oil is thin and this has been sitting for since like april or may of last year this bike Key on. Key on. That on. Ignition on. I'm assuming this is the start. I, I would say probably. The front light's dimming. So it's trying to start. It's trying to but start. But it's not spinning the starter. Right. Which means that it's pulling amperage. Got a voltmeter. I think the battery might be dead. I may need it to go change the battery. Oh, well, snap on. <laughs> it's the only snap on thing I own, Chuck. <laughs> so we got... We have voltage on one side, and then on the starter relay, we're not getting voltage. So it's not jumping across. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, but we're not getting, why aren't we getting signal to the relay is my... Could it be a bad relay? Or? So I'm thinking that this is the side that should activate the... Oh! Well, whatever we did. It spun the starter, but it didn't sound like it spun the engine. Right. I do not hear the engine. In fact, look at the alternator drive there. Is that turning? Yeah, yeah it is. So that's it's the sound. The that's the sound I heard. That's it. So it's spinning the motor. It's spinning the motor. What did we do? Huh? We wiggled it. Um, There's got to be a loose connection in there. I'm wondering if when I unplugged it and plugged it back in again, it made connection. Because I think that the problem's coming from this plug. It's working. But the good news is the engine <coughs> is spinning. spinning. Yes. So if we put the plugs in it, right, we might get it to fire. As long as we have gas in the carburetors. That's true. Good point. <laughs> Without fuel in the carburetor, we're not doing We're much. not going anywhere. Jumping ahead of myself there. Getting excited. The unicorn is waking up. So we got the petcock and the hose in an area that there's really no access. Longer hose. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. It, I got it to the end here, but there's going to be no way Once to get, get it on the end. I'm almost wondering about... Uh, Getting the fuel line hooked up before putting the plugs in and cranking it over, and then because it only takes a couple minutes to put the spark plugs in, right? And just to make sure that we don't have one that's blowing, blowing fuel up. fuel everywhere. Yeah, like there's still a carburetor problem. Yeah, that's probably a wise idea. And then after we do get it to crank, maybe do the same thing. Right. It sits overnight until I get to the radiator. Yeah. And then the next day, pull those plugs out and, and then crank hit it. that button. And yeah. See, make it, sure there's yeah. no fuel blowing right. anywhere. Right. While, if, while I'm buttoning up the rest of the bike. Yeah, because if you got a cloud of fuel come out of any of them, then we know we, have then we, know we got issue. carburetor issue. And then he'll have the same problem again in yeah. a short time. Right. Because so, we don't know what was done other than we could see that I, there's I, silicone. I saw a starter gear was replaced. That yeah. I do know because right. we have the old damaged starter right. gear in the box of goodies. But... He was told the carbs were serviced, but we don't know for sure that and the carbs were I'm serviced. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking at it, and I don't see wrench marks. Like on any of the screws that you would that think... That was recently taken apart. Right. And to get to the, the carburetor bowls, you have to remove the carburetor because the bowls are on the bottom. Right. Yeah, all these clamps are loose, so maybe he did have them off. Is there our vacuum tees? In these manifolds, mm -hmm. and I don't know where the vacuum hoses. All those are missing and gone. Right. Well, the good news is we accomplished our task tonight. Yes. We got the engine to turn over, which is a huge step. It spun pretty nicely and smoothly. And smoothly. Very smoothly. So uh, smoothly, I didn't think the engine was spinning. I thought it was the starter that yes, was spinning. Yes. We're used to a Harley. Vuga, vuga, vuga. Oh, damn. Man. It's not starting. Because even if you take the plugs out of a Harley, it still vibrates. Well, this bike's dead. Oh, wait. It is spinning. What do you know? That's pretty funny, dude. Like when I said, sure, I'll help you put your bike back together, I'm thinking... It was what he told me, What he told me was bleed the clutch and it's ready to go. Yeah. That was, and that's what he told us every week at Iron Saturday. Yeah. You got to just sit down and bleed the clutch. And I said, why can't he bleed the clutch? And Paul's like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, now I know why he couldn't bleed the clutch. Yeah. And honestly, that might be a problem of its own. And that's why he, he might have went to bleed the clutch and it's not. So Yogi Clan, for this video for today... That's a wrap. We got mission accomplished. We got it going. But as you can see, there is just so much more to go. So stay tuned. We'll catch you on the next one. Part three, I guess that will be now. Because this was part two. Um, and we'll pick it up again on part three after we figure out, after we get some hoses and do some research and figure out what we need to do next. Hopefully in video three, hopefully 
We could we hear could... some exhaust sounds. Exactly. That will be the goal for video three. So I'll catch you on that one. All right, Yogi Clan. Have an awesome day. Peace. Later. Later. Thank you.